Greetings, nerds. This is Dana Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont. And with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. I think the uh, 2024 script writers just threw out the script, and they're just rewriting it as it goes. <laughs> it's 2024 script. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, I know we're talking House of the Dragon and the boys tonight, which has all the political machinations and all that stuff. But the last 10 days has just been wild. I mean, House of Cards, Veep, any of these, West Wing, any of these shows, that could not have come up with a stranger script than this. <laughs> How many House of Cards yeah. watch? Um, you know, I never watched that show. But I know, I know about it and, like, the story, you know, how Kevin Spacey's yeah. character, like, all the machinations and stuff. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I know I saw, like, even before Biden announced, like, Sunday that before he, that he was dropping out, I saw a tweet, like, earlier in the day, like, Aaron Sworkin, who wrote The West Wing, was, like, came up with some crazy scenario and stuff. And then, of course, you know, a couple hours later, he, Biden was gone. But, uh, yeah, it's just, I, I, I'm looking forward to precedent at times. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I it's, House of Cards is always a weird show to look back on because it will a kevin spacey association yeah. but at the same time i remember it being so big i feel like i've only seen the first full season mm -hmm. I've, I've only seen that and i don't think everything like the downfall of spacey came until like season four or something yeah yeah that's about <laughs> right yeah <laughs> i don't i don't really remember like the timeline is a bit blurry there but but yeah, I um that's that's that that show is such a a weird thing. I wonder how people will will think about it like ten years from now because yeah. it's it's changed already. Yeah. Oh man. Um we got a new Joker trailer. Now I did watch watch it. Um mm -hmm. I'm not gonna watch anymore. I'm not gonna watch anymore. I'm gonna try to avoid it. Yep. I don't need to see anymore. Like, I am glad that both trailers so far have not really been constructed in a way to tell you the exact plot. I've been I, looking I, at I, you, Marvel. Look at, yeah. Yeah. Look, well, looking at a lot of people, okay? Yeah. A lot of studios do that shit these days. Yeah. So I just... I, I don't really know. And, and something to point out that I find very interesting is... This is a musical, and you mm -hmm. got Lady Gaga. You have yet to hear her sing. I don't want to hear her sing until I'm in the theater. <laughs> yep. Uh, you know what? And I'm glad, yeah. I will say that when I was watching the tra trailer, I, I was wondering how, you know, when I heard it was going to be a musical, I was wondering how it was going to, like, flow. And I think the trailer did give us sort of a, a I guess, a flavor of how they're going to integrate the musical aspects of this movie, you know, into into the into the flow of, of the film. So it's not, I don't think it's going to, you know, it's, I don't think it's going to maybe not like a Vita or some other like, you know, musical film or, or even like Hamilton or something like that. But I think it will have musical numbers interspersed without when they're telling stories. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be a true musical. I think is what yeah. you're trying to get at. It's going to yeah. be a Joker musical <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and it's all yeah and, it, and it's like all an arthur flex head i mean it's i was watching it i was like okay yeah this is, this is as dark as the first one was was and you know i don't think i have even though i i really enjoyed the first film i to this day i have not rewatched it yeah, yeah yeah i always think about that when people start talking about their love of the joker i'm i'm like i liked it i've seen i've actually seen it twice because okay. I, for some reason, I had to put my parents through that mm. so, experience. <laughs> and then about halfway through, I'm like, why? They're, this isn't for them at all. Mm. Um, but but they're a big fan of Joaquin Phoenix. So how can you yeah. not? And yeah. I have a feeling they have forgotten about that experience. And when I say it's Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga, they're going to want to watch that because they like Lady Gaga as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't? Especially when you know she like she that she can sing like yeah. really well. Yeah. So um, I was I was really digging her Harley Quinn and uh, and they made the total right call. I mean even I mean one just to, I was just thinking as I was watching it tonally it would not have worked to have Margot Robbie's version of that character in this Joker film. They had to recast just to like because the tones is so different from. The version that we've seen in the DCU. 
Yeah. Or the yeah. CEU. Yeah. And we don't know if Margot Robbie can carry a tune. So no, not it's going to be musical. Um, yeah. this, this bit of news. I, I don't know how to feel about this anymore. Because right. frankly, I just, the phases and everything, this is 2024. Mm-hmm. We we I feel like the heyday of I know oh, Comic Con's coming up, so this is kind of a timely point for me to make the heyday of Comic Con announcements, buzz, plans, phases, and all of this is just so I'm over it because of mm-hmm. all the disappointment that has occurred since that becoming like a popular thing to do because of the number of projects that get announced and the number of things that change. And then you got the director swapping madness. And and this all leads to the current headline that has been going around about how the Russo brothers, now I'm pretty sure it's not a confirmed confirmed, but they it looks like they are returning to direct Secret, Secret Wars. And yep. then the unnamed so Avengers okay. 5, yeah, Avengers 5 and Secret Wars. Those are the two. Secret Wars and Avengers 5. Yeah. I said yeah. my piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, it is. Uh, yeah, because I, I know the Hollywood Reporter uh, broke it. It's like a minute before Jeff Snyder and John Roker broke it, broke it on their show last week. Uh, and as far as the Russo brothers, at least are in talks about coming back but then i was seeing some you know kevin feige's been everywhere obviously that's given a deadpool is premiering this weekend and i did see a story in inverse where he was just like you know um this is one more rumor of the week (laughs) so he you know so either you know of course he was probably just playing coy because as you said comic-con is coming up uh next weekend and and so he's probably waiting to do any grand announcements as far as directors and actors and projects and all that kind of thing that we've gotten used to given especially that uh, they're doing a special deadpool uh, show on thursday next week and then and then of course they'll have the normal hall h presentation on saturday so so there's gonna be a lot of marvel at 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 comic-con this this year so we'll see what happens. I mean, speaking of Deadpool, I was, you know, I know there was a big spoiler. And, and to your point about the Joker trailer, I have, I'm at that place, too, where it's just like, I don't need to see anything more. And I've been overall pretty. Oh, I, well, I don't know the spoiler. I don't know the spoiler. I'm not, I'm not, and I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to spoil it for folks have, who haven't seen it. Yeah, I heard about this, but yeah. I don't know what exactly it is because I have a very protected bubble around getting yeah. spoiled these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not gonna I'm not going to do that to you or to our listeners. If you've seen it, you know, you know. If you don't know, you'll see. but apparently, but also related to that, Marvel has also said that they have put a lot of fake news out there as well. So yeah. we'll see what yeah. I so you know, we'll and I would believe that with Deadpool marketing because yeah. Ryan Ryan Reynolds. I mean like yeah. And um, I'm also very, like, like I can't say this enough. I really have not watched any of the trailers since maybe that first one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have enjoyed watching Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds promote. Um, and if anybody, like, in preparation for Friday is just wanting more and more of those two in costume, just go check out Stray Kids' music video, Chick Chick Boom. They make a special cameo appearance that apparently Marvel had no idea they were doing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they said That's that. Awesome. They showed a behind-the-scenes um, clip and um, the, where they're watching their cameo in the music video and being mm-hmm. interviewed by two of the members, Felix and um, Christopher, aka Chong Bang, Bang Chong, um, and. They Ryan just out of nowhere is like, you know what? The best thing about this is Marvel had no idea I did this. That's awesome. <laughs> and I wanted to say, dude, he was there as well. He was there as well. He played the weatherman. <laughs> but, but yeah. yeah. And, awesome. and apparently on Friday, they're going to be on hot, hot ones. So okay. I'm looking forward okay. to that. Um, I am one of the viewers of hot ones who fast forwards to the, the bomb one. Mm-hmm. That's what gets everyone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's when same. it really changes. 
Um, all right. Well, you will get our full spoiler thoughts, reviews on everything Deadpool and Wolverine next week. Um, but for right now, we're going to start with actually the season four finale of The Boys episode eight, um, which had its names changed for obvious reasons. Um, but the IMDb summary is calling on all Patriots. We will not allow the stolen election to be certified tomorrow. We must stop Bob Singer's woke anti soup agenda. Prepare for war where we hashtag where we go one, we go Vop. <laughs> you think Homelander created that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, that sounds a very Homelander esque or, or Firecracker thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> on our, on our show. More fire Firecracker, which, which uh, I, don't, I don't. The whole coughing, the whole situation. I was like, yeah, oh, was meds, that. and then five minutes later, it's meds. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking with the, the look that he gave her. I saw the probably the, the best like meme from that was of that whole scene was. Uh, uh, going back to the COVID days, and uh, somebody was like, "That cough was like that, that." That had to be a whole play on COVID. I mean, that 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 that's what that I think they they're trying to get at. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Completely over my head. Did not yeah. think about that the whole time because because me, I'm just like, that's the woman whose tits you continue to suck on and who's producing yeah. milk for you. Like I was more focused on that than thinking, oh, this is an analogy for something. <laughs> well, that's where the boys. You know, thinking of the, of the season as a whole, I mentioned this last week, and even more, and more so when I was watching the finale, and just and and especially with all the real world events going on uh, on top of it, I think I like this season. But I now that we have the full season in the books, just to give my overall thoughts, just to start us off, I, I did like the. I, I will say I do like the boys better when they are more satirical and not on you know, and not so out front and direct what the things they're poking fun at because I just felt like this season was just like, it was just so on the nose and, and so pointed that it, it, to me, it lost its, its edge and, and what the, the satire and, and the things that what it was the prior seasons did so well. I thought this season, it got those kind of things kind of weighed down the story in some respect, in, in, in many respects, but I still enjoyed the finale. Yeah, I think the finale was arguably the best episode of the season. Yeah, I know we yeah. talked about that last week, but it did seem to end a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. um, and and it started fine. I just, I feel like, and I hate to say this, I think the issue more I have is I, I, st I, I don't necessarily agree about this because I think it's the same level for me of the satire that they play in. But at this point, I'm getting more of like, you got any new tricks? Like, mm -hmm. what else you got to show? Like, I feel as though, yeah. and especially if you, if you think about how I've spoken about specifically the storylines dealing with the boys themselves, yeah. I feel like we're just going in circles. Like, it doesn't feel as though these characters are really growing. Mm -hmm. And or they have grown, but that was so season three. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, well, yeah. now we have an evolved character. What do we do? We just keep going on. And it's just I'm starting to get a little tired. So I'm glad that we're approaching the last season. I don't yeah. think they can stretch this out anymore. And as like Anthony Starr is so good in his role. Um, but even him, like, it's not enough for me anymore. I'm just like, <sighs> because, because it, it, this has arguably been the most unbalanced where I felt like I just want to fast forward into anything to do with the soups because like, arguably we always talk about Anthony Starr, but Chase Crawford, as oh, gosh, the, yeah. like he, owns that role so much and is so yeah. good and has such great timing that it's perfect and then even like a train had some interesting things going on i did make a note i'm like this whole season finale i'm like where's a train where is yeah. a train where is a train yeah. um 
I'm wondering if when Annie like escapes, like she gonna just so happen to find herself with wherever A Train is and yeah. Yeah. So so like I just all of that stuff. Meanwhile, the boy stuff, I mean, especially the decision to isolate Butch even further. Mm-hmm. It somewhat paid off in the finale, but damn, I did not like the journey we took to get there. <laughs> I really yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah, I, I I hear you there. With, well, I, and I guess um, with with Butcher, uh, I I felt like it was like five steps forward and like six steps back with him. The way things like because, and but I guess at his core, I mean, this is who he is. I mean, Gessler is that aspect of his personality that is what, what, what's been driving him all, all, all along. And, and now, you know, we have that cancer V Vought stuff that's in there that yeah. just probably exas- that it just exacerbates it. So, um, so, you know, we, so uh, yeah, I did like the journey for me. I actually, I did like the journey that butcher was going on because it was something different. We were seeing a, hu- the humanizing side of the character that we hadn't seen before in his interactions with Ryan. And it, and especially like in this episode where he was, what, there were two things. One, just the, the, the phone call that he gave to Huey, uh, whenever they had, yeah. whenever the phone call there and, and just how heartfelt and how soft and how vulnerable Butcher was in that moment, you know, Butcher never likes to show vulnerability. So that's, that's the one thing that I like there. And then, of course, the whole interaction with Ryan and as Grace was coming in, Malloy was coming in there and, you know, Butcher had everything lined up that if, if Grace had just stayed out of the way, Ryan, they, you know, everything was queued up that they probably could have gotten what they wanted out of Ryan in a less confrontational way. But, of course, no, she goes all full CIA and, of course, fucks things up and and then we see what happens. Yeah, but, I mean, the truth was going to come out eventually. So Yeah, it was. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah, and he didn't kill a bush. He killed her. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I, I, I can I. So I find it interesting you bring up those two scenes in particular, just because when I saw the scene with Huey, mm-hmm. I immediately was like, "This is what's been missing this entire season," because mm-hmm. they chose to isolate Butch. Yeah. Like Huey and Butch is like their friendship, their brotherly bond whatever you want to call it is really somewhat of the heart of the show. And so the fact that they have been on their separate storylines for majority of the season, like I, I I can't like, you could probably count on one hand how many times they've actually interacted. And I Mm -hmm. just, just like that, that's just bad. And I, I did like the scene with Ryan, but at the same time, Okay, I'm going to say something that's going to probably be mean. Um, I think I would like the Ryan storyline a little bit more if they had a different actor. I just, there's something about this kid. (laughs) (laughs) Not working for you? He, it's not, no, no. And, like, like, I, it just, the, yeah, I, it's just not working for me. Um. So and and it took me until now to actually really think about that of maybe I'm just having a problem because this has been a lot of like Butcher with Ryan, a lot of Homelander with Ryan. And it's just like, OK, OK. But I mean, that's hard. I mean, you're talking yeah. about like Carl Urban and Anthony Starr playing opposite of for 90 percent of the time, like. And you're just a little kid actor. It's probably first, second role. So, so yeah. hats off on what he's done. I just don't. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It it just is is not working for me. Do you think it's the the actor, or do you think it's just how the the, the scenes and the the set pieces that they they set up for him? Well, I I can't say for sure just because I've never seen him in anything else. So. Okay. Okay. So. I, I can't. Um, I'm. I think it's probably a combination. Um, but I feel as though I've expressed that something that um, that I do want to give a shout out to because I don't think we talk about her enough is um, Erin Moriarty who plays Annie. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a standout in this episode. Agreed. 
And I was, and I'm shocked just because like, I know Aaron Moriarty can act. Okay. Jessica Jones season one. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, have you seen that? I have, I have. Okay. That's, what, that's, that's Yeah. That's the Netflix shows, Marvel shows I have watched. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So like, I know, but I feel as though for majority of this series, we've been sleeping on Andy a bit. Okay. Yeah. We've been sleeping on her. And then to have an episode where she plays off herself and it's some of the, like those scenes, I was just fully engaged. I was yeah. fully engaged, fascinated by the differences between her as the shifter and then her herself. And it just, it worked on so many levels. And then to get the fighting, I do want to point out um, Kamiko. Okay. I know that if you break your neck, you can heal. But come on, guys, stop putting her out there as this great fighter and then immediately allowing the villain to take her down only for the real fight to happen. <laughs> like, yeah. how many times does that happen? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, she, it's like, it takes, it, yeah, yeah, you definitely have to have a, take a shot each time that happens. <laughs> I can make a drinking game out of it. Right. Like, like I, this episode that occurred to me and I'm just like, oh, she's too much of a MacGuffin at this point. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah. And then for her to, um, to confront Huey about the affair <laughs> with yeah. the shooter, um, yeah. was, was a really, and, and just a reminder because to an extent it's also felt, I mean, you had the whole Huey dad storyline mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where, and so for a lot of the season, you also had those two somewhat in different places and, them coming together at the end of this episode, kind of. Um, yeah. It's just like, and I feel as though, I mean, Kamiko and Frenchie, same thing. Mm-hmm. I think majority wise, why I have an issue with the boys half of the season is because those characters work so well together. And yet, if you're really dissecting their storylines, they've spent been on so many separate journeys and I I can understand to extent why mm-hmm. it's just not something I'm like eager to watch necessarily yeah I, I would agree with you there I mean I think um that the, they are better as a unit than than each individual story because but I think because we you know thinking back through the season each person like there were points in Huey's story where you're kind of like where are they going with this or uh, and and with Annie, I think it was very uneven because I think she had you know, whatever she had the issues there with 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 Firecracker and going into her backstory, and 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 of course the moment there with Starlighters on the stage, whenever she you know beat down Firecracker on the stage, um, and then I guess she got her again in, in Tech Tech Knight's place, but. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, it just, I mean, I think they were like, in the, 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 nothing really, I mean, the, the, the I think I, the, the moment wherever she was, re, had been revealed that she had an abortion. I think that was a very powerful moment for her as far as in the middle part of the, of the show, but other, other, but the rest of it was just sort of like there, nothing that really just jumps out. Yeah. Uh, but, I but, agree. uh, but this, 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 the finale, you know, with, you know, starting with the. Uh, shifter for I guess the last act of, of the penultimate and of course and, and this episode really really shines and then it's, and 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 even only we're here actually Huey but also when they were there with the go to Bob in the in the uh, bunker and you know all all of that and the, the whole doppelganger shifter anything really 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 worked well I, I thought that she she was definitely and I think even even I think I, I think I saw her TV line like recognized her as performer of the week because of that performance. Yeah. 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 The the bunker action though um was some of the best fighting sequences I think they've done. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. and it it just I I felt so nostalgic about it because it reminded yeah. me so much of X-Men. Mm. Like live action X-Men movies specifically yeah. X- X-Men 2 when they introduce Oh yeah, X- yeah. Yeah, Nightcrawler. Yep. And you have that opening scene with the president 
Like, mm-hmm. the way the shifter moved, it was a combination of Nightcrawler and Mystique. And it just, it, it, it was so, and I wonder how much of that was on purpose, because it just took me right back there to when I was a kid watching those movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's a good point. Good point. Yeah. So, okay. Well, you know, let's talk about somebody else who's kind of been flying under the radar and had a big moment. R.I.P. Newman. Yeah. Newman. Yeah. Um, because I, I've I've seen people talk about her mainly because again she's dead. <laughs> no <Yeah>. ifs, ands, <laughs> or buts about it. Yeah. Butcher literally ripped her in half. Ain't mm-hmm. no coming back. Nope. <laughs> okay. Dead. I've and and the kid is gonna go and and maybe we'll see her on Gen V one day, likely. Yeah, yeah. she did um, go to the school. Yeah. Yep, yep. Gonna gonna go and meet up with those cool kids. Yep. So so I <laughs> and she had a moment early on in this episode where she realizes like there's a moment she realizes how much her quote unquote alliance with Homelander is much more of a threat than anything else. Like than even the virus itself. Um, Mm -hmm. Because that is not someone you want to have control over you, much less the world. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, so, and then she has makes a phone call to Huey and Mm -hmm. they have their, their talk. And then Huey gives a a great pep talk to the boys. Like, what does he say? I wrote it down somewhere. Well, what did he say specifically about, oh, if, we, if we're ever going to win against monsters, we need to act human. Yeah. Now, that line stuck with me until Newman was ripped in two. And all I can say is in Butcher's defense, he did not hear the speech. Okay. <laughs> He did not hear the speech, therefore yeah. completely immune, okay? He did not partake in that gathering, so he did not get the memo, okay? You can't fault him. He was <laughs> he was totally drugged up on something else, and he just was like, no, no, give me the virus. Um, for a moment, I also thought they, they were going to use the virus on Butch, and it was going to cure him of whatever disease. Yeah. He had. Yeah. Like it wouldn't kill him, but it would cure. It would be because he, his his powers come from V itself. Mm-hmm. Like I just I don't know. I don't know if they would have created some kind of thing of like bullshit yeah. biology genetic thing that would have been said like so this actually worked reverse and so happily ever after. But no, after this finale, I'm just like both Butcher and Homelander are gonna die at the end of the series. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Newman, you know, her arc th- throughout this season, uh, seeing how and I'm I'm really glad they went back to, to and it really explored Huey and Newman's relationship uh, and really fleshed that out. Because, I mean, I remember him working for her for that brief you know, on the hill during that period. With, and I guess it was the third season. Um, and and but. But of course, he always had the goods on her if she ever, you know, where if they ever needed it. And of course, obviously, the shifter deleted all that stuff. But, but at the end of the day, I mean, he, you know, he, he, this, this season really humanized her, and especially given it with her daughter, and uh, and of course, her whole relationship, you know, how she reconciled things with Edgar, uh, you know, because I mean, she, you know, even after he was let, like, was with the boys a few episodes back. And um, uh, was getting taken back to prison. I mean, she had popped the, you know, the driver taking him back to 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 the yeah. prison. So, yeah. so Who's Edgar, where is yeah. Edgar? Yeah. So Edgar's out there. He, you know, stands probably wait, biding his time um, to do to do what? Who knows? But I'll probably come back in and take over Vaughn after Home, Home Homelander, like you know, finally gets uh, taken out. <laughs> but. Um, but um, but but to, to, to Newman, she it was the, that I was really you know one of the things we talked about this season was like the boys not not offering regulars for you know, for very for obvious reasons. But whenever whenever they went there with with Newman, I was just like I did feel like 
I was like, holy shit. They actually, they, 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 they one, they followed through with actually killing her. <laughs> and, and two, uh, I mean, I did feel like that it was a lot to me, it was an earned moment and it was like a logical place where they, where the story needed to go to really raise the stakes for the fifth season. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I don't, I never was attached to Newman to the point where I viewed her as a um, big part of the ensemble, <laughs> like a core character. I'm sure logistically she was a regular, but I just, I never viewed her in that way. For yeah, I have. How sparingly they used her, but. Yeah, see, I used I I saw her as, especially you know from from really from season when we were first introduced to her and as as the character grew and then of course they had the crossover with Gen V so I felt like she was a pretty integral part of the, of this universe but at this point yeah um all right so at the end of the day not only is Newman dead but so is Robert Singer and this and oh and he's he he, he's not dead. He's not dead. He's in hiding. No. Where is he? No, he was he was arrested because that was all a part oh, yeah. of. Oh, yeah. They, they pinned the murder yeah. of Newman on Singer. Thank you for correcting me. Yeah. Um, on on Newman or on Singer, mm -hmm. um, which allows the candidate that they wanted to win to to get elected um, yeah. And this all went according to Sage's plan. So yeah. while Homelander, after running off Ryan, um, is throwing himself a pity party of sorts, watching the news, Sage comes in and um, she says, hells yeah, blonde ambition, buckle up for phase <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah, buckle up for phase two. And I was just like, wow. I mean, that was... And, and 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 her motivation for it was just she just did it because she just wanted to see if she could do it. And you know, you know? I, I I I do have to commend the writers because Sage is a very has become a very interesting character because not many characters can get away with saying that, mm -hmm. and you actually believing it. Yeah. Like, it's not a cop-out. No, 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 no. You're talking about someone who's the smartest person on Earth. Yeah. Like, she's bored. So mm -hmm. why why would she not? And also, she's a soup herself to an extent. So uh, yeah. why why would she not? And there, there's so many... It's, it, it's very... I find it very clever how they've... Because we've seen a lot of quote unquote, like the other evil guy or the mm -hmm. other evil girl throughout the seasons. Like what was what was her in season two? Um, the storm oh. one. Oh, uh, oh yeah, storm stormfront. Stormfront. Yeah. Um, who have had like these ideas that align with Homelander, uh, but. They've always seemed like, okay, so that's your cop out. You can't get rid of Homelander, so you throw this person and then you get rid of that person by the end of the season. They haven't used Sage in that way. No. Because she's she's not necessarily wrong. She's just on the wrong team to an extent. <laughs> yeah, and they and they set it up so well too, because I remember like whenever she I think it was was she talking to Newman or, or she was talking to someone about you know, whenever she came up with a cure for cancer and and a couple other things, and and again the powers to be like for you know that Newman. basically Newman. She yeah was talking to Newman. yeah she was talking to Newman that whenever they had I guess it was the party at Tech Nights I think so you know and she was just get, so they you know they laid the seats there to like whenever so whenever she said that it was all according to my plan and you know and of course she she and you know and, and she knew that homelander would like along the way would do things to like screw things up because i mean he yeah that, that's they, homelander that, that's they, that's homelander yeah they laid that from the very first scene between the two of them like yeah. all of that um and and and, yeah, and, so just, what, and like the fact that again he didn't kill her we nope. kind of know why. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Writing. Um, yeah. But 
but I don't know. I it'll be I'm kind of excited if I think about Sage and Homelander. That makes me curious of okay, what does season five look like on that yeah. extent? Because we have seen her get too ahead of herself with whatever she's doing and step and step on say the wrong thing, press the wrong button with Homelander. So mm-hmm. I don't know how much she has quote unquote learned from that and is now, even though her plan worked and he's on her side again, like Homelander is the fickleest character I've ever watched. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> they, like, well, he's a narcissist, so yeah, yeah. So. It's the it's the tension that compels propels this entire series forward. Mm-hmm. Is like you see Homelander in a room, you have no idea what the fuck's about to happen, <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah. Or and then the conversation goes one way, and then but Homelander's in a room, you still don't know what really where we're gonna end here. So, yeah. I I. I'm I'm very excited if I think about season five through that lens. Um, we also we see the start of the reign of Homelander, um, yeah. who immediately goes on the offensive. And um, I didn't really care for how they did this, but classic TV. Oh, they're getting away. Oh, they're not. Um, and we we quickly see the the coupling. Mm-hmm. of soup and and uh humans get pulled apart just when they're back together um and that includes Kamiko and Frenchie as well as Annie and Huey and we see Mother's Milk not be able to escape as well um Annie does escape again she flies off we don't know where she's going but Huey's yep. definitely going in one of those internment camps yep yep yeah Huey's going to internment camp uh Kamiko is going probably will I guess go to their collaborator soup camp um and then Frenchie looks like Kate was going to use mind control and you know and obviously uh Frenchie's chemistry abilities I mean will they use them to like you know create a a, a vir- a antitoxin for the for the virus uh will they use them to like you know, create something to to kill other humans. I mean, who knows what they're going to use, Frenchie? But you know, it was it was very interesting that um, you know Kate was you know used her powers to to take him away. Now he's not going to a camp, but he's definitely going to some lab somewhere because I mean, Frenchie definitely has has a skill for for those kind of things. And then of course, um, you know, I, you know, I, I did have a little appreciation there with the. Um, you know, twice now they've like referenced things in the constitution one was you know our, of course they did the 25th amendment a few episodes back and of course the speak as you as you said the speaker was able to finagle himself because he was you know he was there with all the bil- billionaires there in the tech night mansion uh to finagle himself into the presidency uh so now you have uh you know the evil captains of industry uh there you know have their guy in the white house and and then of course he you know he suspends habeas um and so they have martial law now and you know empowers homelander to be the uh i guess the uh, police co- the, the, the cop in chief so it um yeah it's definitely set up uh, I, as those, those are little things that really i think where it was a very satisfying finale and i am looking forward to season five coming in 2026 so <laughs> we got a little time but uh, hopefully, in the meantime, we'll get. Well, I guess, I guess maybe season two of Gen V, we will start. We will see the 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 start of these camps and some of the things that they have set up in in, in this season of the boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the last mystery is uh, what what happened to Ashley after she took the dose of V. Yeah, I heard. I was watching the Geek Buddies, and uh, Mike Vogel uh, suspected that she may become like the uh, become the Hulk because that's the one he was made a point that uh, I, the the one character we haven't seen like the the analog of in the um, in in the in the boys is the Hulk, the Hulk character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, that is a wrap on the boys. Let's head over to Westeros House of Dragon, episode six. Small folk. Um, IMDb summary is with few options left, Renera embarks on a risky venture while Amen takes steps to reshape the Green Council. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Oh my God. Um, yeah, yeah. Team Green. Team Green has definitely, oddly enough, seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> They have seen better days. Um, they are immediately regretting their decision to put Eamon in charge. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, like, we've seen a lot of small council meetings at this point, especially this season. But, man, mm. everyone was just looking across at each other. And it's like, don't make eye contact with him. Don't make eye contact with him. Don't don't yeah. say anything. Like, you... Like I found, I found that to be very intriguing about how how much of a difference that makes. Mm-hmm. Because Eamon has attended small council meetings, but because now he's the regent, everyone like, and they put him there, yeah. knowingly, like put him there, and they and now they have to deal with that where they are also quickly to realize how, yeah, he's a great fighter, military strategist, whatever, but the kid has no idea how to rule, clearly pays no attention to the small folk, and and boots his own mom off of the council. Yeah, yeah, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he 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 definitely has an agenda. He is very confident in executing it, even if it may lead to a uprising within King's Landing. But uh, but at the same time, he he suffers the fools as far as any. You know, he he quickly dis, you know dispatches Kristen Cole to off to to the Riverlands to you know to meet up with the Lannister. On, yeah, meet up with the Lannister so they could take on Heron Hall with Damon. And he also, uh, you know, when Laris was trying to like, you know, weasel his way into into the hand, becoming like the, the, the hand, he was like, No, I want Otto. And that was actually to me, that was like one of the smart things that he did recognize that he he may be a good wartime leader, but he he needed someone on that council who has some exper- who actually has some experience and who will like give him good counsel because I think he was just like all these people around here are just like sniveling idiots who who are, who that my brother put in place. I need to have someone that I can trust and I can trust my grandfather. Right. I, I, it was a surprising move. I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I don't know why he dismissed Allison. Like within this, within a short period of time, he brings back his grandfather, mm-hmm. and then dismisses his mother. Yeah, like, that was, like yeah. It's, it, because she could offer very similar counsel to him. But then again, I th- I guess if we think back to, I think it was the first episode where there is that scene between, um, Eamon and Sir Christian about. Alicid's connection to Renera, like mm-hmm. Eamon's thinking enemy mom mm-hmm. I love you but you're still tied to my enemy so I can't trust anything you're going to advise me to do yeah 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 which which yeah. makes sense and um yeah I, I and so know. so to that that extent yeah I, I would understand then I still don't know exactly why he wants Otto yeah, I think with Otto, I mean, I think he he did see how well Otto served his grand served his, his his father. I mean, right, what, right, yeah. and, and so did and, Aegon. And, yeah, well, Aegon, yeah, well, yeah, but Aegon was like Aegon had some less. He, he took some good parts of Viserys's rule, like for example, understanding that the how to keep the the small folk happy. Because uh, he, I mean, he did when Otto was like, you know, challenging Aegon on that. Uh, Aegon like said, no, you know, we we need to keep the small folk. Yeah, hmm, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He just he was being naive about it. Yeah. Um, I think though that with Aemon, it's it's interesting because um, I know we're talking Team Green, but Damon's whole storyline um not it just in this episode but this entire season and there's a line in it where he's having a conversation and he brings up the fact that she never wanted it they mm-hmm. never wanted it mm-hmm. and 
Alice points out, like, you view the crown as a prize to be won. Eamon does this, has been doing the exact same thing. This yes. is me taking revenge, winning, claiming what all you, my own family, like, cheered against me. Mm-hmm. Not viewing the crown as for what it is, which is actually a burden and a responsibility. And not something you just win, like... Because if you view it in that way, when you get it, you, you, um, it's almost like, oh, I need a new game to play. Like, because what's more there to do? I've, I've succeeded. So it's, it's like an unfulfilling prophecy almost. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's like, yeah, you just like proverbial dog chasing the bone. Then what you get is like, yeah. Um. They don't know what to do. So, yeah. That, it, it, one other thing, too, I think, to your question about Alicent, why uh, she is being knocked down each time by by the council. I mean, I do think it is that the the, the misogyny of the times too. I mean, we just yeah, and how they tr- how they view women, how they treat women in, in Westeros. Uh, I, yeah, I think that's still that that is also still a factor of it, and and I think Damon Amon, excuse me, has has you know, some general disdain for for her. I mean, I, I think he, you know, whatever whenever he told her to go back to do your domestic things, I I, I couldn't help but like think, but uh, that he was he was aware of what was going on with with her and, and Sir Kristen, and um, and then also. You know, at at this point, she's you know she she's just she's just his mother, and and you 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 know you're that's that's your role now. You're not you're not queen dowager. You're queen dowager, but your role as far as having any say in the governance of of King's Landing is is no more. We think the crown thanks you for your service. I mean, I think he even right. said something to that right. effect. Yeah. Right. Right. He he's like um, I want this power all for myself. So yeah. family, yeah. please be excused. Yeah. He um, Allison this episode and ever since she realized the error of her ways um, with Renera, you see this m- probably arguably the most highlighted in this episode with the doubt and mm-hmm. the the realization. Because, I mean, to your point about the misogyny on the council, I mean, Allison, just like, of course, this is how they're going to treat you now. Look back at the night Viserys died. They yeah. immediately, all of the men in that room looked at each other and said, oh, yeah, there was no way we we're going to let Renera, a woman, lead. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. That yeah. Was, and even like, yeah, it was it was yeah. like it was like read the room. <laughs> yeah, read the room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And even last week, Laris again reinforced that. Whenever she was like, I should be the one I've done it before, I can do it again. And they're like, Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah it's but they're they're also, I mean, now having watched this episode, that small council, there no there is no way they were not gonna vote a name in because they're all freaking afraid of him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Chris Nicole was just like, "You want me to go out to out to meet the Lannister? Okay, I, I, I'm on my way." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and did, you, did you see anything? You know, and like, you know, did you see anything? Uh, no, no, boss. I did, I didn't see a damn thing. <laughs> Nicole was like, <laughs> "That scene between Amon and Aegon." Yeah. Um, and and they're they're doing what they're doing with Aegon is is so well done because all I think is can someone kill him because mm-hmm. I don't want to see him dead, but put him out of his misery. Like yeah. that's, yeah. that's so painful, which, it is. which actually is, is also countered. Like you feel it more because in the, in a scene that occurs on team black, when um, Sir Stefan goes to try to, um, to, I don't know how you would say it sees like, Get bonded to sea smoke. Get yeah. bonded to sea smoke. As soon as sea smoke burns him to pieces, one of the people slits his throat. Yeah. Like the it is more painful to die in that manner than it would be like like make it quick. And so yeah. if you watch that scene and then just look at Aegon who like charred body, broken limbs and all, you're just like, ooh. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was, yeah, and and, and Amund like you know, given bringing the little marble, the king's marble, and like putting it on his chest and just driving it in, and you know, I need a, a sorry to cut you off, but I need yeah. a book reader to fill us in on because I know we've seen the marble. And I know I might have seen it in Game of Thrones, but I'm not sure of the significance or if I'm forgetting even a scene between the two of them that would make that whole use of that prop that much more compelling. I mean, it's already a really good scene, but I just yeah, didn't yeah. know if there's some additional context that would be helpful. But uh, continue. Yeah. No, no, that's a good point because I mean, I remember. I mean, Viserys said it. I mean, it's always been at the at the table. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's, yep. it's definitely so. Yeah, I'll have to. I'll, I'll definitely have to like make a make a note on the, the looking Westerosies or the, or the wiki. And, and if but yeah, book readers, let us know the significance. But I'll also look in the wiki to see if there's anything there because uh, I, I thought that was very interesting. That it was almost it was like a, a physical manifestation of Dame of Amond, like. You know, I've I burned you. Now I'm gonna bring the, the 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 symbol of of the king here and just driving it to your chest to just make it even more painful in my getting back to you for you for all the bullying and all the things you've like how shittily you treated my brother all these years. So right. yeah, yeah, I thought that was that that scene and also like you know w- w- wondering. How, I mean, it, there are so many. There are several. There's a couple. One scene I think Eamon was like wishing for his brother's demise. You know, again, just to like, uh, this. I think he's talking to maybe the maester as far as his injuries or something like that. And and so he's just like, but you know, he's just counting the days. But you know, we did get a Darren uh, mentioned this week. Speaking yeah. of speaking of, of the brothers and 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 Alicent uh, when she was talking to her brother. Uh, uh, about Darren and, and, and uh, speaking of Alice and uh, you know the regret and, and the, the the feelings that she's been having this season um and that I thought that was a very powerful scene between the two of them and 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 you know Darren basically being a sounds like he's an excellent a great kid turned out well adjusted and everything versus his, his two brothers uh, who've been in the red keep and how they've turned out I thought it was very pa- that was another painful thing for Allison yeah, he's kind. Um, yeah. I I I liked the line. Um, well, I agree. Like, I like the whole scene, but I like the line where she's like, "I always wonder what would have happened if you had been sent with mm. father and not me." Mm. Like, yeah. yeah, which is such an and now knowing that that could have happened, it all your mind starts to work because you know how Otto and Viserys were so. Mm-hmm. Why, oddly enough, there could have been a a timeline where where this guy got together with Renera. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you know what? The kingdom was at peace. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> for all we know, but I yeah. mean, I'm sure it wouldn't have worked out. I mean, we're still talking about Westeros and Damon's still around, yeah. but it's just I, it was it was such a good scene, and I also can appreciate that. They just didn't bring on Allison's like goofy, stupid brother. No, the kid, the guy clearly is observing Mm -hmm. his sister's situation as much as he can and has now witnessed war as well as war with dragons. And so he, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I can't see him having that conversation with her. Um, now like in the first episode when we first meet him versus yeah. now like he's been through some things so yeah. it's not just like he was telling her about her son but he also at the end tried to assure her that it's not because you didn't weren't there to raise him yeah. um you're you, the kids you were around were corrupted by this city not by yeah. you exactly yeah and but, i think she needs yeah, she needed to hear that because she was definitely feeling, feeling, feeling a lot, feeling had a lot of feelings there for sure. Yeah, I, I, I would argue though that she's was corrupted by the city, and that yeah. just like transferred to her children that she raised in King's Landing. But yeah, yeah. Um, 
And and then you have the scene with Allison and Hel- Helena and the people, the small folk, getting mad because um, they are being um, left to fend for themselves, to dig up clams and fish and fish for days, and uh, and they've had enough of it. And I think this is right after uh, Rena sends the ships of suppl- food yep. to to the people, and um, they see them coming out of the chapel and whoo. Woo. Oh boy. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. So yeah. if for folks for folks who complain that this is a too talky of an episode, you got your action and boy was there some action there. Uh yeah, Allison gets hit in the face with a fish. Helena. Oh yeah, speaking of Helena, I mean there was her also her, you know, the 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 one scene with her talking about there were three uh three three was it three birds and all, one silent now. So I wonder I was wondering like where what does she mean? You know, it was clearly, you know, she, she was having one of her visions. So I was just wondering where, what that vision was. Um, it was it related to her. silent right now. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it was the brothers as well. Um, well, the siblings. Uh, and the, yeah, the, the siblings. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. Because if you yeah, count or, Aaron, then it would be three. Anyways, continue. Yeah. Yeah, just it was just I just, it just it just popped in my head whenever we were talking about the scene that in the with Helena and and Alicent. But yeah, I mean it's just very interesting how the people. Uh, and, and I know whenever we moved to Team Black and talked about Masera and you know helping to concoct this plan, um, how the people are taking it out on the team green versus team black who is you know who's put the blockade in place but again it just reinforces Eamon's um lack of vision and as far as being a 360 ruler as far as just making sure to keep your keep you know keep the home folk happy because at the end of the day uh you don't want to be fighting uh, you know two fronts of you know battle battle at home but also, you know, of course, the, the issues abroad as well uh, with with Team Black. So uh, but, so it was very smart. I loved how they like you know, taught, you know, again, just really showed how, you know, the West Messer said there's, there's more than one way to fight a war. So. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, really. I don't know anymore because I forgot what, what I was going to say, but like. They 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 were able to shift the wind so quickly is because nobody there was Otto's not there to spin the news yeah. like mm-hmm. there's no propaganda. We saw that very early on this season yeah. um, about how Otto was able to spin things like think about um, just Sarah's death and mm-hmm. full blame on on uh, Renera. So the people not only are they starting to listen to others because this um Ms. Harris has her spy in there who's saying things but also they're feeling it like yeah <laughs> they're yeah. really not <laughs> like things are not getting better and then previous nope. episode you have like close the gates can't go in can't leave it's it's yep. like well what what do you expect to happen yeah. like <laughs> yeah, he, Hugh's yeah, daughter's yeah. like sick, and yeah, because we saw Hugh. I mean, he was the one that started the whole thing. It was like he was like you know sucker punched a guy for lettuce. I mean, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so this whole white warm, uh, like, at what point did you were you watching that scene between Renair and Miss Saracen? Like, okay, they're gonna kiss. It, the stage was set when she, at least with this. I mean, they've they've had chemistry all throughout. Whenever as they've gone closer, but I think whenever she, whenever Renera was um, practicing with the sword, and she was like, "That sword looks good on you," and I was like, "Huh." So when they kissed, I was like, "Okay, you know." I know yeah. it was a very tragic story, but at the same time, I was like. It 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 did it, it it didn't come out of left field for me, and I understand that Emma Darcy was actually uh, they were the ones who suggested that that scene happen. Uh, so, but it didn't come out of left field for me because they they clearly have that obvious chemistry, and I mean, and for Renera, the character she she's been so alone, and you know she's lost Renice as far as a confidant. Damon's off doing his thing. I mean, she's very alone there. 
and and so you know we've talked about this before where uh Macero has become a sort of like the unofficial hand to the to the queen and and confidant and so it uh, you know it it happened yeah yeah no i agree it, it made a lot of sense yeah um i i don't know if it was the most romantic thing after no. miss harris yeah. talked about how what happened between her and her dad um yeah. but but yeah they 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 found some sort of weird romance in that also so good for yeah. them good for um, them it wasn't incest it wasn't like I mean, it, it wasn't, wasn't rich. Incest, which means it's not gonna last exactly <laughs> Because, and, so, yeah, and you, we're not really starting to see, and I guess I wasn't expecting this to see how much it's not just Renera struggling with how she is supposed to fight this battle without being able to actually fight it herself, but also fight it with slash without Damon. Yeah. Like it's this whole sh- and it's and it's really it's been kind of subtle of how they've done this about this not only in terms of their relationship but also in terms of that that power of king and queen um which which now that I'm thinking about it I mean Matt Smith of course why wouldn't you he played in the crown Prince Philip. Yeah. And and you see that played out in the early seasons of The Crown, arguably throughout the whole series, about when when you have a queen, what that does to their husband, who um, who is not necessarily king. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just <laughs> king, king consort. Yeah, yep, king consort. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So so I, I I'm starting to get more appreciation of that as they've added in that extra layer there um, or not maybe added, but just have, have made sure it's very clear of, of the different layers of complexity that's going on between their marriage, marital disputes, as well as this whole political um, family war that's occurring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's very, and also just, you know, and I think even double, for me, it was just like given the fact that Damon and Sarah, the White Worm, had their own relationship too. Right. Uh, just adds, to, you know. So they, they, it's like they, they both have experience with Damon, and so they, you know, I think so. There's also that that common bond too that they have have dealt with this 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 crazy dude who you know who has his own sights on power and other things, and um and, and just you know and you know. When things get tough, you know, he, fly, he flies off. Or, and, and well, so, it's the second or, son syndrome. Yeah. You're not the first son, so if there is power to be had, it doesn't go yeah. to you. It goes to the yeah. first son. So yeah. it's, it's – and that's why we're seeing it not only play out with Damon, but also with Eamon. Like, yeah. We're, yeah. we're seeing the history repeat itself totally, to an extent. Totally. And yep. and they've done that really well in this second season and and this episode we we finally get something that I've been complaining about is we get Viserys. Yep. He's not as strong <laughs> <laughs> as I remember, um, but but we do see good old Patty, and um, and he has some scenes um, where starting off with the vision of the hair for the day. And uh, um, basically, an argument that that ha- was had, and mm-hmm. and uh, Damon's just like, "Why are we still arguing about this?" And and he he refuses Damon as his heir. We also see Viserys mourning the loss of his wife, and Damon there to comfort, yeah. even though he wasn't there um, yeah. during that time. And so we get like a regret scene. Um, and then there's, there's, I think it's the final one where, um, Viserys is on the throne and Damon comes in and ends up somewhat being locked in there and is just wanting to leave. So, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, all the all the scenes with with Patty and as Viserys being back. I mean, they were they were so powerful and and yeah and and and, and the one that really stuck stuck stood out to me, of course, was when Damon was was comforting Viserys when he when he lost his wife and 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 their I guess that was that was that Viserys the son uh, after the C section. Oh, I don't. Um, what that kid was named. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Remember, yeah, um, but yeah, just just you know the the, the guilt that that he had like you said and just the fact that you know i guess in his own mind this is his way of just like trying to trying to make some peace with the fact that he, he wasn't there for his brother um because i mean there's just so many things swirling around i know some people on social media and stuff have been like you know there's some sentiment out there that folks are tired of the stuff going on in Heron hall but uh, I, I, each week it just seems to me it just gets more and more fascinating as he gets he, the deeper he, he he goes into that that madness and then of course uh, his relationship with Alice <laughs> and you know to the point where Damon Targaryen actually like reaches out to someone to ask for counsel. <laughs> I mean, yeah, which I thought was yeah. Uh, which like are, I, 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 yeah. I've only I would agree with people more who were on the side that okay we get it he's going crazy enough is enough but they've added more scenes following up between him and alice which which i i i seem to like those scenes more than i think the visions by now and i love viserys but are just running a bit long and also we're just like okay get to the point with this like you you are fleshing out the character and the depths of the emotions and all of that, but at the same time, it's like, okay, can we get some, I don't know, like a different, some more complexity here or a different dynamic? Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's just I I I can see there that side to to an extent yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, but I think but I think with with the uh, with Alice going off I just love that scene too she's like don't worry in three days time everything will be <laughs> the winds will shift <laughs> which, which, it, which it is it, it is shifting um she seems yeah. to have an act for predicting the future I just need her and Helena to like meet up randomly in some brothel one day and uh, yeah. share some some predictions and some stories totally totally um, <laughs> I need that that scene the the last point on Team Black um, is is we're gonna talk about Corliss, who uh, who was not the most faithful guy we thought he to be. <laughs> I <laughs> I at least didn't realize this that the kid had some bastards. Oh, you didn't really? No. At what point? No, Will. No, you never told me that. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I thought it was pretty clear that, like, Adam and Alan were, like, his bastards. I mean, that's why the whole thing with Renice last week was so, like, you know, she 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 absolved him of it before she got, before her demise. Yeah, yeah. I thought about that scene. No, it, it was not clear to me at oh. all. Oh, um, yeah. Because, because right. I thought everyone was saying, oh, that was a really strange scene between Renice and Alan and... And I was like, yeah, it was like some weird kind of chemistry stuff happening there. Very strange. Uh, but no. Yeah, but, uh, uh, so, so yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, 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 my apologies for not making it clearer to you that, that you know, she was like, when she saw him, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, that, you know, she realized that was his bastard son. Yeah. Um, but it isn't Alan who gets the, uh, the dragon. It is Adam Hall who gets yeah. the dragon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sea smoke. And yeah. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. No, that that was about it. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I was just going to say. I mean, I, it, you know, speaking of Ad, you know, Alan. I mean, it, uh, a couple things. You know, he, he was because he is Corliss's bastard. I mean, I, they they did a nice little point there, like showing him shaving his head so the white Valerian hair would not be uh, would not be coming out. And also, just to, you know, with the whole pairing, I know we touched on it some with Sir for Sir Stefan. Uh, earlier in our discussion, but uh, of course, Alan, uh, given that he is, you know, part, you know, given that he is has Valerian blood in there and it's and it running through his vein, which he is uh, Valeria. <laughs> I know all these. I mean, the, the oh, anyway, um, 
and that you know it was going back to something we discussed last week about non targaryens flying uh being mm-hmm. able to get bonded to dragons so a couple of things one uh, you know sea smoke was was bonded to um Lineor, uh Le- leon or valeron uh Rhaenyra's first husband remember he was the he was the the closet I know, of I know. yeah yeah i just yeah, I, I have forgotten about that aspect uh one so i, I forgot sea smoke was his dragon um so I, did, I put the connections together this week and then but also uh you know to that point you know of course he you know he faked his death in the books he actually was killed but in, you know but in the show they they faked his death and he went away but given that sea smoke i thought about a scene earlier in the season where they were talking about sea smoke you know feeling lonely and and, and lost uh was uh, you know maybe it was a, a sign that, that uh he was killed Lenear was killed because you know you can't you know a dragon can't be bonded to two people so i wonder you know one i wonder if he was killed off off screen and he just didn't know it because that's why now he he could now sea smoke could pick another person uh and then also the fact that um alan as you know does have corliss's blood running through him you know Cor- corliss is uh valerian so you know they they can uh you know they the the freehold can can be bonded to dragons so that's maybe that's why sea smokes you know did smell that and gave him a chance to like you know prove himself and clearly he did because you know we get the, the end scene there where they they they, they, they spot sea, sea smoke with a new rider so yeah yeah, yeah. They, they certainly do um yeah. so i may not have picked up on chorus liz uh cheating but I did pick up on that a sea smoke was um, Lenora's dragon. So, so okay. we're, okay. we're even. We're even. We're even. We're we're even. <laughs> same, same why do you, why do you, yeah, you should, uh, yeah. Sorry to remind you about that. And uh, and uh, yeah, sorry I didn't make it clear back in the episode where she points out sea smoke is my late husband's dragon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the woman has like had husbands and then. An, an affair with her uncle like yeah i get it yeah. Yeah. very it's, it, complicated yeah i got like i joked before i need to have like a chart each time we talk about this show just to like make sure i have all the various characters and who was married to who and all that kind of stuff you, because you would not have survived together. game of thrones because <laughs> we're talking multiple families where you're just like okay who is what <laughs> and and granted in this show i feel it even more now that everyone's damon People pretty yeah. much the same name, just one syllable difference. That's not hard at all to keep track of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, but oh yeah, good. and we did get. Yeah, yeah, and then one other thing, a team Black I was just going to mention. I guess we, we there's a there is I guess another dragon that's out there that's not claimed because uh, we did see Ray, Reyna uh, when she was up in the uh, Vell uh, with all the dead sheep. And the dead, the dead, dead animals, and of course the burn marks on the yeah. ground. So there is, yeah. there is another dragon that's out there too. That's uh, and, and Olaf is still, you know, of course, you know, speaking of the small folk, he, you know, we we did see him briefly in this episode too before yeah. the big, the big thing. So no, yeah, the, they, you know, the black team is rising. You know, yeah. they yeah. they they have may have um not had the strongest season, but they've been plotting some stuff, and and we're we're getting to kind of an even playing field, um, especially with Vagar and Amond. But um, yep. next week's the penultimate. Yep. This Hard. series is known to have great penultimate episodes. So yep. um, looking forward to that. And and then and then we'll be at the season finale. I mean, yeah. off the races. Yeah, yeah. And then it'll be, I guess, 2026 before we get to the next season. So you just keep enough. bringing that up. Just keep it in the salt in the wound. Salt in the oh, wound. Oh, I know, no, I know. This is just painful. It's just painful to think about. <laughs> I, if I got through the hiatus between and one and two, you, you'll get through the hiatus between yeah. two and three. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. 
You can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B E L M O N T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. <laughs>